How's it going guys? So a couple days ago I did this very kind of chill commentary style for a tutorial and I'm gonna do it again. We're gonna talk about modern lighting techniques. So different things that you're seeing a lot in um, new advertising using 3D, a um, lot of stuff on Instagram and Pinterest, product for sure. A lot of product rendering uses these techniques. So I'm gonna break down a couple examples and I'll show you how to do it here in Blender. I did wanna quickly shout out that I'm doing a 25% sale on real-time materials. I dropped real-time materials a year ago, so to celebrate, I'm doing a 25% sale. You can use the code one year right now on Blender Market and Gumroad. I'm gonna link all that in the description if you wanna grab it. I just added carbon fiber, hex materials, cloth, all that stuff is in there. It's 250 materials currently and growing with free updates. So you can get that now if you'd like. Um, but with that being said, let's get into how to do this. Um, so this is the Pinterest board. I created while kind of studying this and figuring these techniques out. So I'm just gonna point out a few of these and how I was able to kind of pu uh, pull off these techniques. Um, we're actually gonna go after um, this one here. See if I can make it bigger. All right, so you can see how just soft it is and we're not using area lights. I used to use area lights constantly, um, but in this case, we're not using them because an area light is too spread out. But less talking, let's just figure it out. So this is, I made this kind of one step at a time artwork, but we'll just go ahead and hide that. So this is the piece that I made that was very much inspired by that piece in terms of the lighting. Uh, we can even make it softer. This is a lot brighter than they did. Um, and also just as, as a FYI, <laughs> your lighting is pretty dependent upon your materials and your objects. Um, the reason why it looks softer, the reason why XYZ is going to be dependent upon your materials. So if your materials are very reflective, not rough at all, your lighting, no matter how you set it up, is going to look really bad. You're gonna to have to have different lighting, XYZ. So with this very soft lighting, you're also gonna want you're also going to want materials that kind of catch that light and spread it across the surface. That's going to be very rough materials, not like not metallic materials. These were kind of like cement and stucco and things like that, that really take your materials. And I think the word is to like diffuse them. I mean, take your lighting and kind of diffuse it. Uh, but we were using this spotlight right here. So maybe we can do it like 2000 and now it's super soft. Uh, but how do we do that? So we, we have our main light and then we have kind of, I'm gonna call it the ambient light. I can't remember the exact terms, maybe it was called ambient light. So we have an HDRI set at a very low um, brightness and we have a point light. Now I mentioned I used to use area lights. I used to use area lights all the time because they were super soft, but this is really soft. How do we do it? So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hide him and we're going to create this. So what we need to get is of course an area light. So we're gonna go ahead and grab an area light. Sorry, we're gonna get a point light and I'm just gonna move him over here. And we also need to hit S to scale it down because they're massive by default. So I want my light to kind of point this way, but I also want it to be slight, slight diagonal, uh, but not so much of a diagonal that it's going to, the light is gonna hit here. We only want the light to attack this portion of our artwork. Then I'm gonna hit R twice to get a good rotation and then I'm gonna move him back. All right, so now we have our light. So we're gonna render it here. Nothing's happening, of course. So power, we're gonna to go to 4,000. That's what I had mine set at. Already looks really cool. Um, how do we make it better? This is a very, very harsh shadow. So you're gonna play with your radius. So if you bring your radius to a higher value, now it's much softer. And then what we can also do is play with your spot size so that your spot is gonna be playing with that. So bring your radius down and then I'm gonna kind of play with my spot size. I hope my viewport isn't freezing right now. Typically when I play with lights, it freezes my viewport. So notice how we have our spot size condensed to this area. And then we just go ahead and bring that radius up till it's nice and soft. And there we go, we've created something. Of course, that's still pretty harsh um, trying to remember how I handled it in my original artwork, which is on my desktop. Yeah, so I kept it relatively harsh and it's fine. Um, and there it is. It's still pretty soft. So we can do something like this and maybe do 5,000. There we go. It's great. And then we, what we did was um, 
also for that HDRI. So if we go to zero, no HDRI, this is how it looks. So I picked a HDRI that's just like an interior of a house. You can use like a studio, something that's still soft, no harsh lights in that HDRI. And then if I go back, I did 0 0.015, very low. And what it did was it kind of filled out that very just ridiculous blackness of the scene. Now it gives you very soft, very good lighting for just this kind of still life scene. Um, and that's how you pull that off. All right, on, on, onward, on to the next one. Um, this one's really interesting. I've done a tutorial on how to actually get lighting like this animated. If you wanna check that out, I think if you type in like Ducky 3D animated lighting, this one should come up, but I'm gonna show it to you guys anyway, cause this, I'm gonna show this a different technique than that one. That one was done with built-in textures. We're actually gonna get different textures for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and go and grab that. So this is the scene that I created. So if I just go ahead and render this, um, hopefully I'm not frozen. Um, see how it looks very relaxing. We have some type of greenery or plant or whatever in front of a light. In this case, I did use an area light. So here's how we, here's how I built that out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit the render button here. So there's a lot of things going on here, but essentially what we have is a plane right here. And I took a PNG image of, or it was just like a black and white image of a plant from textures.com. And we put an area light right behind it. So the area light is shining through it. And one thing that's very specific that we did with the area light. And so we made the spread at one degree. I think that that's what that means degree. Um, so if you notice this, see how the lighting looks? If I bring that spread to uh, say 10, that entire thing is gone. The whole plant is gone is because the area light are by default, very, very, very soft. You can probably hear my cat eating in the background. So if you bring that to one, it's as solid as it gets. That light is not soft at all and it's going straight through that. Um, and so in this case, this is a very general video, not a tutorial on specifically how to do this, but basically you can take an object and then put an area light right behind it, shine through it, and you can really have some fun. I'm specifically using um, it, like shrubbery, greenery or something, that creates a very calming effect. So this looks like leaves from a tree. It, it just looks very calming and very natural. Um, at the same time, I also used uh, Blender's default sky texture using uh, Nishada. And then I made my sun intensity at zero. What's really cool about that is if you put your sun intensity at zero, that sun is like not on and you're just using like very soft lighting. And then we have the strength at 0 0.24. So very low like HDRI lighting. And that's really the key. Have a very bright light on something. If <laughs> the dinging is my cat eating, but I'm not gonna tell her to stop. Um, very bright light and then have it reinforced with a very low light HDRI to fill in your shadows. That's really gonna help you when you're filling in those shadows to make it look even, make it look nice, and in this case, just kind of make it look good. And so that's how you're able to get soft lighting back here, bright lighting here, being reinforced. All right, this one's cool. Um, this is actually by one of my favorite artists, 3D artists ever, Peter Tarka. Um, and so I did my best to kind of relatively recreate this so I can show you how to get soft lighting in this case. It's very similar to the last one, but we're gonna do, we're gonna do it anyway. Um, no, it's not similar to the last one, sorry. It's similar to the first one we attacked, um, but we, we still had some fun because I wanted to point out something we did here. There are three lights happening in the scene. There's an area light. So there's a point light hitting it here. There's an area light right back here doing that. And there's also um, a gray HDRI. So if we just bring that to zero, it is reinforcing a little bit right here, using that just default gray. Sometimes it's okay to leave it on. Um, but what I noticed about Peter's uh, render is there seems to be some lighting happening, not only lighting hitting here, but there's some lighting happening here. And I don't think it's caused by the one light hitting it. I think there's another light. I even think there's some lighting hitting it here, I think, but there's only so much I can get from this image. So what did I do? 
so from the first um, from the first example I showed you, same exact thing, just had a very soft area light hitting it. So if I go ahead and kill it, hitting H, now we just have that backlight, boom. And then what I did was I took a point light, which just spews light everywhere, and 360, just all over the world, um, right, right here. So it's hitting here, it's hitting everything, but the point is it does that. See how it's really dark? So we'd have to kind of figure out maybe like, oh, maybe we should do HDRI lighting. I still want it to be kind of dramatic in a sense. So we popped a light back there to goof with your background and goof with your focal point. So we have a bright focal point here, bright focal point here, and it kind of works together and meshes everything together. And in this case, instead of using an HDRI, we just kept it out of gray. So you feel like you did that, it would do that. Um, but that's how this is pulled off soft lighting, but kind of dramatic in the sense that this is still like, you have a harsh shadow. That's kind of the difficult thing. Like I want it to be soft lighting, but I don't want it to be so soft that you could barely see shadow. Um, in this case you can, cause you can do it here. And if you want to see the render, the render is actually very clean and very easy to look at. So this is the final piece. It's very nice. It looks great uh, where you have harsh enough shadow, still easy to look at harsh enough shadow here, but it's a very clean, very pretty lit scene. That's just nice. It's nice to look at. Also shout out to Peter Tarka, whole scene here. He's amazing. Study his lighting. Um, his Instagram is amazing for studying lighting. So another one I wanted to show, <clears throat> so another piece I wanted to show was this right here. Um, zoom out a little bit. Notice how you have these streaks. Maybe there's an object in front of the light, but it reminded me of a type of light but it reminded me of a really cool type of light that maybe you haven't heard of. It's called an IES light. And so the way you can kind of tackle these really cool looking lights is, uh, let's see, IES right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and show this. So notice how, I'm gonna go ahead and show this. So notice how there's some detail in this light. It's not just one flat, like shootout of light. It actually has something interesting going on and that's called an IES light. I'll show you how to use those, but I'll show you what they are. And there's a website called IESlibrary.com. It's just full of just free IES lights. Here's IES lights. Um, and it, it gives you data from, I think like real actual um, lights. If you're doing a lot of architectural rendering, like I needed this exact type of light, you can get them with a IES lights rather than like putting objects in front of lights and trying to make it look like that. So the way it would work is you would just go here and go here, download IES. Then what you would do is you would go ahead and get in a point light. So you would shift A right here, point light, boom, all right. And what happens now is you have to go into the nodes. So you click on shading and then you'll, you'll have your object and so what's gonna happen is you would just go ahead, shift A, search, IES, IES texture, and then plug that into your strength. And then you would just go ahead and put in your file, and then you can play with your color within the IES light. And what that's going to do is it's gonna allow you to have some more detail in your light. And then I also, looks like I took the same light and I pointed it. So if we have this light here, I'm gonna hit R I'm gonna hit R, see how it has some detail there. And then I pointed it there onto my model. This is very quickly made, not a very pretty scene, but it talks to you about IES lighting, which is really, really fun and very, very cool. And I think very useful if you are trying to get something realistic and something interesting, an IES light is really going to be a good use case, you know, depending on the scene. Now the last one is something I'm seeing a lot and something that I really, really like seeing um, and doing in lighting. And then that's these pieces where it has these streaks. And um, on my Patreon, I did a product rendering, two product rendering tutorials, and I did one of these with that. Um, you're seeing that a lot. So I think I highlighted a few, like this one right here implores the kind of the same idea of just this beam this beam coming down. And and you can also see on both of these, like I've said a couple times, really bright light accompanied by an ambient light 
to fill in your shadow and still give you some detail. So the way that that's pulled off is we're just gonna go here to the render. You can see I kind of, I did it here very quickly. And what, the, what we did was actually using area lights instead of using a point light. So instead of using spotlights, which are circular, um, I wanted to be able to use a light that was square or even rectangular. That's gonna give me control over the actual beam rather than being a, a curve at the end of it. Um, and again, with these lights, the area lights, remember I mentioned spread. So let's see, which one is this? So if I did a spread of one, see how just bam, super, super hard shadow. But in that case, I did five, so it's still soft on the edges, hard enough, and then I accompanied it with another area light that's hitting it. So if we look at our scene here, rectangular light going down this direction, and then another long, skinny light hitting our object. So you're getting these two point lights, and then, of course, accompanied by a very low, we're still using the sky texture with a sun intensity of zero, and this one looks like the strength of 0 0.3, that creating this really dramatic scene for our product. Um, and this really keeps those lighting and brings your eye to the product, the focal point, and it looks really, really cool and really effective for creating lighting. Um, just to give you an example here, if we didn't do our sky texture, this is how it would look. Actually kind of cool, um, but too much contrast for me. So we added the uh, sky texture, filling it out, giving some more detail and just making it look pretty. Um, and that's it, those are the examples I created. So if we kind of look back on this Pinterest board, um, you can see there's a bunch of these that I just say, like this one is like a very obvious use of using an object in front of a light for these watches, giving you this really cool effect. So sometimes it's very obvious use cases. Like this one, same thing, area light hitting it here with a soft edge and then probably a spotlight hitting this with a soft edge too, giving you a really cool effect. And of course, maybe they didn't use a ambient lighting for this one or like even this piece here. Um, you can, if you look at the, uh, the tutorial I mentioned where we were animating it, you can just kind of put these lines in front of your, and then do that. And then of course this one definitely has like an HDRI around it. So there's all these really, really cool ways to create these modern lighting techniques that are very just good to look at, kind of put you on the cutting edge of design and probably get you some jobs if you're freelancing. Um, but with that being said, that's it. Um, so yeah, that's how that works. This is the modern lighting techniques. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned some stuff and I'll see you in the next tutorial.